to the chapter number 3 that is your animal study see for chapter one the importance of the clothes you will see that what is the importance of the clothes you will say that they protect us from the heat they protect us from the cold and they also helps us to look nice and beautiful so talk about how the clothes are made up of you will see that first of all clothes are made up of the fiber fiber is the smallest thing which is in the clothes like thin hair like strands and from fibers yarn is made and ultimately from the yarn fabric is made so there are the two types of the fibers natural fibers and artificial fibers so natural fibers which are obtained from the plants and animals like cotton jute wool silk man made fibers are also called synthetic fibers or artificial fibers they are synthesized or prepared in the laboratory like nylon nylon terylene acrylic polyester and if we talk about animal fibers with fibers which are obtained mainly from the animals so here you may see that there are the two animal fibers which is your wool and silk so we will see that the wool is obtained from the hairs of the animals like goat sheep yak camel and silk is obtained from the insect silk worm so here in the picture you can see that the sheep and we also obtain the wool from the sheep here so the sheep like goat here you can see that there is one kashmira goat and we obtain the wool from the goat also which is also known as kashmire or pashmina so we also obtain the wool from the hairs of the yak you will see that the wool which is obtained from the hairs of the yak will be brown in color and we also obtain the wool from the hairs of the camels also so this is also the breed of the camel the llama and we also obtain wool from its hairs so you can see that the wool can be obtained from the fleece also from the hairs fleece is called hair from the hair of the sheep goat yak camel and you will see that this animals mainly have two types of the hairs first is your outer coats hair which is also dirty and in that to that there is the inner side hairs which are fine soft and that are used for making the wool so you will see that there are the many breeds of the sheep found in india and they are like angora if we talk about the angora wool then you will see that it is obtained from the angora rabbit or the goat and you will see that pashmina wool is obtained from pashmina goats camel hair is also used as a wool so these all are the animal wools so you will see that in case of the processing of the wools how the ultimately fiber is obtained from their hairs you will see that there are the many processes like shearing scouring blur separation dyeing spinning and you will see that the first process is your shearing process in which the hairs are cut down or removed from the animals that process is known as shearing so you will see that after shearing there is another process scouring in scouring you will see that the sheared hairs contain dirt and the dirt is removed from them by washing them in the detergents that process is your scouring so after that you will see that there is a sorting process in which separation of the different types of the textures of the hairs is done so after that there is carding also in which you will see that the tangled hairs are straightened straightened after that ultimately you will see that there is dyeing process into we will see that in that fibers are colored in different colors after that ultimately there is spinning the fibers obtained are spun together to obtain yarn from them and ultimately yarn are woven into the fabric so here you can see that the shearing process is going on here so the ship is cut it out with the help of this instrument so you will see that this is the wool 
in the yarn you can clearly see in the picture so what will be the uses of the wool you have seen that we use them in wearing the winter season clothes why it is we used to wear the clothes during in winter only you will see that the woolen clothes have spaces between them and air is trapped between in that spaces and you will see that air is a bad conductor of heat or a poor conductor of heat so it do not allow heat from our body to go outside that's why it keeps us warm so another animal fiber which we have discussed is your silk if we talk about silk you will see that it is obtained from the cocoons of the silk worms and sari culture it means the rearing of the silk worms to obtain silk from them is called sari culture so you will see that in the picture silk worm is shown to you this is also your caterpillar it is mainly raised on the mulberry leaves so if we talk about the history of the silk then you will see that first of all china in china the silk is produced and you will see that in ancient times only emperor used to wear the clothes which are made up of the silk and you will see that they are the root from china it is transported to the different countries and the roots which are which through which the silk is transported from china to the other countries and that roots are called silk roots so you can also say that the roots which connect china to other countries is called silk roots so you will see that also you can see that there are some proofs also in which it is stated that the india has also developed the china uh, silk in ancient times it can be viewed from the indus valley civilizations traces of the silk is found there so there is the life cycle of silk worm you will see that there are the four stages in the life cycle of the silk worm first is that you can see that female silk moth lays egg after that that eggs are hatched into the larva and that larva is grown into the pupa or also cocoon and from that you can see that the cocoon is produced and ultimately you can see that the silk moth is produced so here these are the life cycle of the silk moth as you can see in the picture see in the picture like female silk moth gives eggs and eggs are hatched into the caterpillar form after that male silk moth gives eggs and eggs are hatched into the caterpillar form after that you can see that it is turned caterpillar starts excreting the fiber from caterpillar starts secreting the fibers from its mouth and you will see that and turns that fiber around itself and it is converted into the cocoon form you can see that cocoons are mainly whitish or yellowish in color so after that you will see that from the cocoons ultimately silk moth is produced and this is the mulberry tree on which the mainly the silk worms are eaten or silk worms leaves this is the mulberry tree so if we talk about the processing of the silk you may see that there are the processes first is the rearing of the silk worm which is also called sari culture and second process is reeling we will also discuss about it and after that you can see that the dyeing and ultimately there is spinning and weaving process so this is the processing of the silk in which you can see that the silk moth lays eggs then it is converted into the caterpillar form ultimately in the picture you can see clearly so rearing of silk worm you have seen that the female silk worm lays eggs and you will see that eggs are stored under the paper strips and they are warm at a suitable temperature after that they are hatched into the larva form and mulberry and caterpillar used to eat only mainly the mulberry leaves here in the picture you can clearly see the rearing of the silk worms 
so reeling of the silk you will see that what do you mean by reeling you will see that first of all cocoons are collected thereafter they are exposed to sunlight or they are boiled and silk fiber starts coming out of them and these fibers are then collected and that process is your reeling and nowadays reeling is done by machines so here in the picture you may clearly see the reeling process going on and ultimately the processing of the silk so in dyeing you will see that in the market you can see that the different colors of the silk fabric so silk clothes are there so you can see that how these are produced these are produced after dyeing dyeing it means they can easily dyed into different colors so and spinning and weaving process you will see that the silk fibers which are collected from the cocoons are spun together into threads and ultimately they are woven to different types of the silk clothes and that from that fabric we make our different type of the clothes this is the spinning and the weaving process of the silk shown in the picture so if we talk about the uses of the silk then you may clearly see that if we talk about the uses of the silk we'll see that silk is only that type of fiber which is weird both in winter and the summer season and you may see that it do not attract the dirt so it can be easily washed off and you will see that it is used for making the clothes like kurta shawl wedding clothes silk has been okay and for china is the latest producer of the silk after that the last topic which is left for this chapter is your occupational hazards so you will see that occupational hazards are the hazards which the workers may suffer when they are working in a particular industry so all that hazards are called occupational hazard since we have discussed in this chapter the two types of the animal fibers wool and the silk so the people working in the wool industry and the silk industry may also suffer from the diseases like anthrax the workers may suffer from the anthrax these are also the hazards occupational hazards we'll see that the bacteria present in the hairs that is bacillium anthracis and it this disease anthrax is caused due to that bacteria we'll see that they may also suffer from the skin rashes or many respiratory tract diseases like here sometimes may enter into the their here so the wool giving animals may enter into the respiratory tract and they may suffer from the respiratory diseases and you can see that since in case of the processing of the silk there is one process that is reeling you may see that in reeling cocoons are boiled so if the workers are continuously boiling involved in work with the hot water in case of the boiling of the cocoons you may see that they may get immediately burns into their hands so all these are the diseases which the workers may suffer when they are working in a particular industry